right, our final, final panel of the day, um, one that I'm super, super excited for, uh, one that I've been thinking about a lot. Um, I've been thinking about California a lot. Um, this is a market that uh, is on the cutting edge of trends. Um, it is a market that I think everybody can look to uh, as a leading indicator of how the category will develop in other places around the country. And there's a lot happening here. There's more than 600 breweries in California. Um, there's a lot of involvement from uh, larger organizations like Heineken, Miller Coors, Anheuser-Busch, Constellation now getting involved in craft here in California. You have Anheuser-Busch buying wholesalers in California. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff happening here. So I invited a few folks to come discuss that. Um, we have four individuals that are going to join me up on stage. I think they're in the back, probably mic'd up. Come on up here. We have Amy Gutierrez from BevMo, which I'm super excited. I've been trying to get Amy up on stage for the last like three years and she shut me down. So finally, uh, she said yes, thank you. Um, Tom McCormick from the California Craft Brewers Association. Uh, Steve Almarez from Reyes and Jeff Hansen from St. Archer. Welcome to the stage for the final panel. Thanks, guys. Hey, man, how's it going? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining me. So a lot of different perspectives, um, which is, you know, if, if I could pick an ideal panel um, or an ideal group of participants for this panel, you guys would be it. Um, Steve, I don't know, for those of you who uh, are, are a little bit unfamiliar with Steve's background, he's been around uh, California for a while in the, in the beer scene, worked for Firestone Walker for a time, now with Reyes Beverage Group heading up their craft, uh, all their craft development around the country, well I guess the western half of the, of the U.S. now. Um, but so, some really great perspective, obviously Jeff from St. Archer, you just uh, uh, were involved in, in the deal with Miller Coors. Amy, you're bringing a, a very interesting perspective as a retailer, the largest, uh, you know, craft uh, uh, beer, wine, wholesale, or uh, retailer in, in on the West Coast, and Tom McCormick, the voice of 600. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, let's talk about what's happening here. I mean, there's a lot of changes, um, and I'll start with you, Tom. Um, from from where you're sitting, you know, what's the biggest change happening in California today, and um, what kind of impact are all the changes having on the way businesses operate here in California? Well, no surprise is it's more competitive. And, um, you know, it's hard to crystal ball what the future is going to be, but I can say with pretty much um, certainty that it's competitive today and it will be more competitive tomorrow and going forward. It's not going to get less competitive. And that's competitive at all the tiers. So it's going to be harder to get distribution, harder to get shelf space. Um, it's just going to be more competitive. And you mentioned 600, I should just say, because we're here in California, we're talking about California. We surpassed uh, 600 breweries two days ago. Oh, wow. We keep uh, very close track of that. We just released our press release uh, yesterday. So we now have 600, probably 601 breweries in the state of California right now. They're opening up at the rate of 100 per year, so we've doubled huh. the number of breweries in the last three years. So I've been saying this for a little while, but it still blows my mind every time I say it. Half of all the operating breweries in California have been in business for three years or less. Wow. So, you know, that um, kind of tells a story right now. But to answer your question, uh, the biggest change uh, due to all the recent developments and just the ongoing um, growth in, in the, the segment and the growth in the number of breweries is it's, it's getting more competitive. Yep. And you mentioned the, uh, the 300 figure, uh, 300 breweries less than three years old. Uh, Amy, that's, that's obviously had um, you know, a profound impact on the way that you guys operate. Uh, you're you know, selling a lot more local uh, California brands. Um, how have you had to kind of adjust your buying habits and, and just the way you allocate space in, in your stores to accommodate for all these new brands? It's a lot. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, the cold calls that I get, the people dropping samples off, um, um, emails, phone calls, um, somebody knows somebody, the stores are allowed to email in and say, I want this brewery. 
it's changed everything in the last, more so the last six months, but definitely the last 18 months. Yeah. You know, we have 202 active distributors in the last four months. That means we've bought something from 202 distributors in three states. Wow. So for me, our focus is local. Not that I'm taking away from the big brands, because I'll talk about that in a minute, but the local is by area, and we activate uh, products per area. So the stores have um, the autonomy to bring in what they want, and they adjust their shelf space accordingly. Right, and that works its way up to you at some point mm -hmm. if they want a mandate to, to, to be placed in more locations. Correct, either from the store, seeing that it's already been set up and that they have a distributor that's come in to them, or if I have been approached by a brewery or a distributor. So has that impacted some of the other brands that are from outside of the state and just how they're performing in your stores? You know, we follow the IRI numbers pretty closely. I've, you know, midway through the year checked out what was happening in California specifically and, you know, saw a lot of sort of slower sales for, um, you know, Boston Beer, CBA, New Belgium, uh, some of these, you know, stalwart uh, outside brands that were not California. Um, and that you know, was, was part of what led me to this, this panel that, hey, there's, there's a lot of really great brands that are not performing at the level of, you know, the Ballast Points, the Lagunitas, the California brands. Um, have you seen that in your stores at all? The big brands for us are the big brands. I mean, every week we watch the numbers. Is the same products are in the top 50 every single week. The specialty brands that pop up are in and outs. They're the, um, you know, Firestones of the world, the, you know, Deschutes, the, you know, Stone, the products that just come in and out, they will pop in. So our big brands are our big brands. And that's what we in the office say that's going to go on the floor with a little bit of autonomy for the stores to do, stack out what they want locally. But everything else for the stores locally is on shelf and a couple little areas in the cold box. Right. So no, because I still support my big brands. Right. Jeff, uh, when we spoke on the phone, I think it was last week, um, you know, we were talking about this idea of how competitive it's gotten, and you, you said something that really stuck with me. You were talking about an instance where, you know, you walk into the bar and, you know, you're, you're fourth in line now to, uh, to meet with the buyer at a bar uh, because there's, you know, three other sales reps ahead of you. Um, how competitive is it out there just to, you know, even get a meeting? It's extremely competitive. I mean... Um, when I started in the industry in 2004, I'd go into a bar, I mean, I think there was like 10 total suppliers in, in San Diego at the time, and now our sales reps literally are like six deep at certain craft beer bars, have to set appointments, sometimes they get turned away, and now a lot of these buyers are like, I can't see you, I, I've already seen like 15 suppliers today, so it's just insanely competitive. And have you had to adjust the way you guys operate in order to overcome those challenges? I mean, we've invested in people. I mean, we've, we have a, we've invested heavily in people, and, and I think every craft brewery in this room is going to start talking about this, especially in California now, is there's only so many amazing people in this industry, and there's like 100 breweries, so there's, and so finding the right talent is something we invested in early, and so we invested in often. Um, but, I mean, we have a lot of talks around St. Arch right now about employee retention. I mean, everyone is like trying to poach each other's people because to find a great brewer, to find those amazing salespeople, now you have to pay for it because they're in limited demand and it's, it's becoming very, very competitive. So. And you have guys like Steve that are running off to go run Reyes. <laughs> uh, Jeff, don't take any of our people, please. <laughs> <laughs> What's your experience been like uh, at Reyes having to manage a lot of different craft brands? Um, what are you seeing in California compared to some of the other markets that you guys are in? That's a good question. I mean, we're right in the middle of annual business plans. I, I got to hear a little bit of uh, um, the Devil's Backbone guys, and kudos to you guys wherever you're at. Uh, you said some really good stuff out there as far as, uh, you know, paying attention to your distributors and listening and, you know, coming from your side and then being on this side now, it really, <laughs> it, we, we, uh, we do listen and we, uh, we definitely take what you guys do and what your breweries take uh, and, and are prideful of. Uh, we want to do a good job. You know, I think every, every distributor wants to do that. Um, but as far as, uh, you know, this market, I mean, everybody's seeing the same thing you're seeing out there, Chris, the, the local in each market. I mean, we're, you know, we have Chicago and we have Lagunitas out there with Windy City and, and you know, Three Floyds and, and Revolution. You know, and those brands are, you know, on fire as much as uh, Jeff's brands or uh, we, we just became partners. 
Uh, so I get to sell his, his fabulous beers. <laughs> and, um, you know, Ballast Point of the world. And, you know, all of our California brands are all up, all up, uh, you know, double and some triple digits. And, and you attribute that just to the, the localness? Yeah, I think, you know, people are resonating. And, uh, you know, I think the, the, the local brands have a great chance to tell their story, uh, whether they're out in the trade and having a lot of people out there in the market. Um, they're making great product. I think first and foremost, that's, uh, uh, that's huge now. I think, you know, 10, 15 years ago, we, we would probably all be discussing, you know, we wouldn't be discussing quality, I think, as much. Uh, it's, a, it's a big topic now. Um, the other parts is, is you all have uh, uh, amazing tap rooms, and what a great way to showcase what you guys do best and tell the story at that point where the consumer gets to see the brewery, gets to taste the beer super fresh, and um, the story and, and everything that you want people to hear about your brewery is there. And we're pretty lucky here in California that you, get, you guys get to do that. So we want to shift the conversation just slightly um, to some of the acquisitions that have happened here in California. Um, now pretty much every major company has a stake, has a foothold here. Um, Heineken with 50% you know, of Lagunitas, Miller Coors with St. Archer, Anheuser-Busch with Golden Road, Constellation now with Ballast Point. Uh, you know, when I was originally planning this, uh, this panel, um, you know, it was it, IPO next to Ballast Point, uh, so that changed pretty quickly. Um, and I think I had a question of like, you know, when is Constellation going to get into craft? Um, and <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> But, you know, you have some very serious operators now that are invested in California. Um, one, why is California such an important market to them? And two, uh, how has that changed how other businesses uh, throughout the state are operating? And we'll kind of go down the line starting with Tom. Well, uh, California, I, th I believe, is, it's, I think it's the 15th largest beer market in the world. So there's, there's we... A lot of beer is sold here, so um, it's it's a good beer market on for a lot of reasons, and I, I so it's not surprising to me to see a lot of these acquisitions going down in in California. California craft beer also, uh, I think, has somewhat of a of of a brand to itself. You know, all things being equal, if you have a, a beer from California next to a beer from many other states, um, all things being equal, which is never the case, but um, I think uh, people will tend to buy the, the beer from California. I think California craft beer has a good reputation um, across the country. So I think those are kind of two primary reasons why those big corporate brewers were looking in, in California. Do you see that in your stores, Amy? If you, if you stack a, uh, a California beer up against a, a Midwestern beer, does it sell better? Well, we kind of go back to the national brands and what I can stack out because I can do north and south, Washington and Arizona. So I can't stack out anything that's no, that I can't get distribution on. Sure. So that's the reason why we have a lot of store choice when it comes to our merchandising calendar that we run for, you know, six to eight weeks. So I allow the stores to put in what they want, and that's kind of new for us. Yeah. And, and Jeff, um, you're in the thick of it. I mean... You, you existed as, a, as an independent operator. That changed very quickly. Um, what really drove St. Archer's decision to seek out a partner as you guys kind of looked out at the changes that were happening in California specifically? Because um, you, you guys are still only a California brand, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, three years ago, um, 300 breweries. You guys started up, what, two years ago, two and a half years ago? Two and a half, yep. Um, so things have, have accelerated since you started. What, what drove you to seek out a partner like Miller Coors? I mean, I think for us, I mean, we were in a position not unsimilar to what Devil's Backbone was saying, where the growth was so intense and we needed capital so badly. Um, I mean, banks, when you're a young company and you have no historical financials and you have no EBITDA to speak of, I mean, they're really not in a position to give you a $10 million loan. So it's either that or raise the money privately and potentially dilute your, your shareholders. Um, so for us, I mean, we, we started to look at, you know, how are we going to go to this next phase of brewery expansion, which was going to be about $10 million to get a new brew house, new, you know, new packaging line, everything to take us to that next level. And for us, I mean, going with a strategic was, was the only answer for us, really. Was some of it protecting yourselves as well from, uh, you know, any sort of... Uh 
I guess, serious, problematic, catastrophic uh, disasters down the road, um, you know, having maybe over leveraged yourself and uh, at a time when, you know, 600 other breweries are out there and, and competing. I mean, how much of your decision to, to partner up was uh, just I mean, that was definitely part of it, for sure. I mean, we, we always had national aspirations, and, and Simon brought up a good point where he's like, you know, maybe the national play is, is going to be very few. Um, we feel like we can be one of those brands, and we knew that we wanted to do that. Um, so we chose with, um, you know, we, we went with Miller Coors. We felt that they were the best uh, strategic partner for us, and it wasn't going to be a catastrophic event. I mean, we could have raised the money privately um, to do it. It just would have been not a positive impact on our company internally. Right. So. Um, Steve? Anheuser-Busch is consolidating in, in the middle tier. Um, you know, they already have a number of wholly owned distributors, bought, bought a couple more earlier, uh, earlier this year up in the northern part of the state. Um, what impact is that having on just the sort of dynamics of, of uh, the craft category in general? I mean, those, those two wholesalers had a lot of craft brands. Um, I think, you know, sort of coming full circle from the whole day, Wynn mentioned it in Colorado earlier this morning, uh, what impact that had in Colorado. So what impact is that having in California? And, you know, what, what is Reyes kind of, are you benefiting from any of that? Are you paying attention to it? What's on your mind as, as these things are happening? Well, I feel for, I see Doug went over there. Uh, I feel for you guys in, in, in Colorado because I was in the same boat in my former life. And... Um, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. I think uh, for, for what it does, I think everything comes in cycles. Uh, for those of us who were here in the 90s, uh, there were a lot more distributors. And uh, as consolidation happens, um, opportunities arise. So I would assume that uh, with uh, the consolidation of, of wholesalers, there's going to be opportunities for somebody to go out and you know, open up a small little distributorship, get a couple good brands, and, you know, make a go of it. And if you can, um, you know, Keep the gas prices as they are. You and have a small, small territory. Uh, I think you can you can be quite successful with the right brands. Um, as far as what for, for us here at Reyes, I mean, you know, it. it I guess it, it, as far as benefits, uh, I mean, you know, we we kind of go our own our own way in a lot of ways. But uh, you know, I think for for our teams, you know, do brands come to us? I think it gives us a little bit more of an option um, because we do fill a nice footprint and. Uh, you know, we, we just sell beer. You know, we don't have uh, uh, sodas or, you know, wine or um, we do a very modest amount of spirits, but uh, it's all related to our brewer partners. So for us, it, it gives us a lot of opportunities to see breweries come to us. But, you know, to be honest with you, Chris, we, um, we haven't picked up a whole lot of brands this year. And I can tell you, um, as far as new brand acquisitions, um, I, think, I think Jeff is actually the only one craft one that we've uh, we've we've acquired um, but it's through a, a, you know uh, an existing partner um, so it's it's been very small we've had uh, many breweries come to see us and you know for whatever reason it just didn't work out so there's going to be some some difficulty getting your beers to market out there do you feel that at all amy when when these you know consolid when the consolidation happens in the middle tier does that impact uh, your business at all does it make it more difficult? Does it make it easier? Um, what's, it does what's make it a little more difficult because we, like you said, there are some smaller distributors that are coming online right now, and so they only have a couple of brands. So for us, do they have a minimum to ship? I hooked somebody up about two months ago. They're charging me $9 to make a delivery for one case. Well, there's my margin. I'm done. So I ended up cutting them off. So we need to know a lot more information ahead of time on what they actually can do for us and what they can make those deliveries. So if they have three or four brands to help build, you have to start somewhere. And if the bigger houses can't take them, like you said, there is some opportunity for the smaller distributors. But it's more work for us because it's one more invoice for you know, the store, for us, for you know, our AP department. But I'm willing to give them a chance because I, I still like the little guys. Right. And I'm definitely willing to help them. So it hasn't deterred you from uh, no. turning your attention away. No. Right. And Tom, I know you, uh, in a former life, ran a, a, a wholesale right. operation. Um, I'm sure you have some thoughts on you know, kind of how everything is evolving um, and how things are taking shape in the middle tier here in California. What are the implications in your mind for consolidation here? 
Well, it's the biggest impact, I think, is are, are on the, the larger craft breweries that need the horsepower of a B or a Miller Coors distributor. So in any given market, we basically have two major brand wholesalers, and then we have a pool, typically, of one or more kind of specialty all other wholesalers. But it's really only the major brand uh, wholesalers that go to all the accounts, the ABC accounts, yep. and can make the calls and provide the service levels to the chain stores uh, that they require. So I think the biggest impact is going to be on the larger craft brands when it gets knocked down to just one available major brand wholesaler in a market. Hopefully that we will have um, wholesalers start up. I can say firsthand that it, it's really hard to start a beer distributorship. Um, <laughs> it's hard to get brands. It's a very expensive business uh, to start up, but you know, so is the brewing business. I wanted to start a brewery in 1982 and I didn't have enough money, so I got talked into starting a beer distributorship instead. So <laughs> it can be done. I don't know if I could do what I did back then today, but. Um, hopefully, we will see um, the marketplace correct itself by, um, you know, naturally bringing in some more um, options. But it's definitely a concern when um, Anheuser Busch buys wholesalers in the marketplace. And again, it will be kind of wait and see. But we've seen in other states what typically happens. Right, Jeff. Was that on your mind uh, as you guys were starting to grow and? I guess looking out, you know, into the world and, and interviewing distributors and thinking about new markets, did that cross your mind of, hey, we, we better have sort of a guaranteed way to get to market and we need a partner to help us with that? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we were very selective about the wholesalers that we chose um, prior to the acquisition with Miller Coors. Um, I think, I mean, our mindset was always let's pick the right wholesaler for the brand in the right area. So we never chose, we never aligned with one network versus the other. Like in Southern California, we were Stone, and in Northern California, we were with Miller Coors and AB Houses. Um, it just happened the timing when the AB Houses were bought back, we were going to the Miller Coors Houses. So um, I think every brewery should try to align with a wholesaler that aligns with their goals. Um, I mean, that's exactly what we did. I mean, we wanted to be in grocery. We knew we, we invested in national account managers, so we needed like the people that had the muscle that could merchandise and get involved in the chain schematics and everything else. So yeah, we definitely took that into account when we were assigning wholesalers. All right. So what can you know, operators in other states learn from what's happening in, in California? Um, clearly there's acquisition activity, there's consolidation, there's skew proliferation, there's a lot of breweries. Is this, you know, sort of foreshadowing what's to come? Uh, are, are, are all these trends going to move east? Uh, are we going to see 600 breweries in, you know, Texas or, um, you know, another, another large, uh, vast geographic landscape? Um, and, and is this the future of beer? Well, I think so. Bart Watson would say so. Um, you, you know, I, I think we will con continue to see a lot more breweries open up. I, at some point, we're going to start seeing some breweries close down. I, I think the, the message to me is we've always talked about quality. You know, you, you have to have a quality beer to be successful. But, you know, we've kind of lived in an era where if you made a good beer, um, you, you could kind of you could do okay. You know, you could get distribution, you could get some shelf placements, and you could survive off of uh, uh, revenue in a tasting room. But I think it's uh, you, going forward to be successful, you'll have to have a lot more than just good beer. You're going to have to really have your business chops down. You're going to have to know distribution, retail, marketing going to have to have the financial resources to grow. It's just going to be uh, much more complicated and detailed to survive and thrive going forward. Amy, are the uh, craft brands that you guys are working with at BevMo, are they, uh, you know, do, do they possess all the abilities that, that Tom just mentioned? Are they, are they mature operators or are they still uh, figuring it out? They're still figuring it out <laughs> because I deal with, you know, from very small where they have a canning line come in or they have a bottler come in that small where they're only doing 250 cases all the way up to, you know, the, the big guys. But I'm, I really want to stress for, for us is I do think that the distributors need to kick it up. Hmm. And, and why would you say that? 
because because of the smaller people coming in, because of their portfolios that are growing, I think that they can't just be order takers anymore. They need to go back to the old school selling, telling the story like you know all of the brewers that were up here telling their story. Three minutes takes that distri you know the distributor person to come in and talk to my store, so they can relay that to the customers. Say, hey, I, you know this is really cool. You know, look at the label. This is because you know they, they did this because of this. And I think it's really important for that story to get down. And if there's not a distributor in the store to talk to the customer or the brewer to be in there, I think that it needs to relay, for, you know, from the distributor or brewer into our stores. Is, is the distributor the best person to do that though, or you know, should it be somebody from the brewery coming in to tell that both. story? We get both. Yeah, I get breweries that come in that don't even contact me first. They go into the store and they got the store so excited, you know, they email me. Oh, you got to have this person. They're so excited. They have this beer. They have that beer. So it's the excitement. And that's what the whole industry is about. It's the excitement. It's the fun. So I do think that the distributors are going to have to notch that part up just a little bit. Yeah, step it up. Step up your game, distributors. Jeez. <laughs> uh, sell, sell all these SKUs better. Come on. Um, uh, Amy, I'll give you my uh, direct line. With that. <laughs> <laughs> Time's up. <laughs> um, Jeff, you know, kind of final word from you as, as the clock winds down here. Um, you know, you, you clearly have done a great job of telling the St. Archer story, um, you know, getting, getting that message out there. Um, 600 breweries in California, are they, are they all going to be able to do that? Um, is, you know, are all these brands going to be able to it, coexist and be successful and, you know, potentially even have an event like St. Archer did, you know, and, and find a partner that can, you know, help them grow and scale? I think everyone has, every brewery has their own definition of a success. I mean, for us, I mean, we didn't set out to be acquired or be sold, depending on whatever people think, but we honestly didn't. I mean, we had a lot of conversations where we were like, hey, like Josh wanted maybe like keep this thing forever. We just got in a financial position where we needed help um, and we wanted to grow faster. But I think everyone has their own definition of success. I think that it's gonna be very challenging for people. And what I would recommend to any brewery, especially in California is, Pick which pack you want to run in and run in it. Whether it's a barrel-aged program like Society, what they've done is incredible. Um, if you want to be a more of a, a full-scale production brewery like St. Archer, we want to do appeal to more of the masses, that's great. Um, or you, maybe you can do a combination of both, which is like what Firestone has done. I mean, they have a great, amazing barrel-aged program, and they make beers for the everyday craft beer drinkers. So pick, pick which pack you want to run in and go run in it and do what makes you happy. All right. Are people picking their packs in other states? But just to go back to Amy's question real quick, um, I agree with you. I think, you know, it's, uh, it's something that we took really seriously. And when I came here, I would say the same thing. You know, we, we have uh, embarked on our own course, uh, you know, uh, in Cicerone. And whether Cicerone's the, the be-alls, this isn't a, a pitch for them, but it is a definition for, for some knowledge. And we have really spent a lot of money and time and effort of our whole sales team to go through it. At least everybody has to be vetted first level. Um, with the final numbers should happen here, but I think we'll have somewhere in the realm of uh, possibly 40 second level Cicerones just here on the West uh, within our organization. And so we take education super serious and you know the people that we want to come and work with us have to be beer people, have to be passionate about you know going to market with the story, being able to talk about the beers and that's why we have you know our partners like Jeff and some of my other partners in here is, is, is they're able to educate our teams and have our teams be able to tell their story the way they want it to be, to be told. You know, what are the priority packages that we need to be focusing on for each of your breweries? So um, that's, that's the future, and I, and I believe so. And I think, uh, I think everybody's stepping their game up. It's not just us. Is there enough talent to go around? Um, are, I the think human, are the human resources there? N no, and uh, I think... Uh, it is going to get hard to get people uh, to to uh, that have some of the experience, but there's definitely a ton of people with a lot of ex um, enthusiasm. So I mean, I think you just need to find the right people and you know mold them into the right way. And if you can find a good salesperson that 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 loves craft beer, I think you can you can build that person to 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 greatness. All right. Well, um, thank you guys. This has been great. Uh, I know we're we're three minutes over time here. We uh, it's dark outside. Uh, beer time. I need another beer. We got some winners to announce. Um, thank you guys for joining us. Really appreciate it.